PlayStation exclusive at the moment, Stellar Blade just announced a great milestone. Developers of the game, Shift Up, just announced that the title has sold over 1 million copies. Considering the game was made with a small dev team with a reportedly equally small budget, this is great news for the developer and the future of the franchise. However, a number of people don't see it this way and are quick to call this number a flop. This is despite the game topping charts and getting critical acclaim. Now these people or fanboys seem to have an ax to grind because the game was launched as a PlayStation 5 exclusive. But this time, do they actually have a point? We'll tackle all this on the next installment of The Spill, our gaming hot topic video series. Buckle up, cause this is gonna be a good one. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of Geeks, Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock, Digital Culture. And here, MM2K Gaming back again with another episode of The Spill. And this one is called Stellar Blade Attacked by fanboys for selling over 1 million copies. <laughs> oh, the hubris of it all. But before we get into all that, it was a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and rock those bells for notifications, please. So you always know when we're dropping these doses, we appreciate all of y'all straight up. I want to thank everybody too for all your support. You know, we're a small channel. We're just grinding away, trying to add to the family and the network of gaming content that we already have. Um, and we want to thank you guys so much coming back over here and creating content on the console war and the battle between PlayStation and Xbox and AAA gaming. You know what I'm saying? I, I felt I had to get my sea legs back, but I, I feel like we got them. Shout out to Cold Blood for everything he's contributed. Man, I, I think we're 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 on a, on a, a right path um, to really propelling this platform so it can do more for you. All right. Now, with all that said, all that all that sappy BS out of the way, I want to tackle a couple of things. I want to tackle the claim of Stellar Blade being a flop. I want to it, then talk to facts, and then I want to give my conclusion. So, again, let, let's go over the claim. Claim is that the game is a flop. Um, and I think people are saying this because they're used to playstation being celebrated in the realm of its tentpole i guess is what they're calling them the tentpole single player exclusive titles right like how they sell a kajillion they sell as many on being on playstation alone as games sell going multi-plat right and that within itself has a lot of people creating this false expectation that everything that's a PlayStation exclusive is going to sell or must sell as much as God of War and Horizon Forbidden West or Spider-Man or something like that, right? That's the expectation set. But because that's what's set, people will look at a million after a couple of months and they're like, huh? there's no examination of the backdrop. There's no examination of the, uh, you know, what was put into, what was the resources put into this? What was the purpose of the game? What was this core demographic? And what's being forgotten here, particularly because these these fanboys that are jumping all over this, like flies on you know what, they have been told so many falsehoods about what determines success in this generation. Oh, it's about game pass. It's about engagements. It's about this. It's about they've been thrown every which way that you can think of that they don't even understand anymore. And I can't believe we're in this era. They don't understand the point of the exclusive. It was never a mystery until this generation. <laughs> now it is. So we have that going on all in the background. And I think what's going on on top of there just being a disconnect from the purpose of the exclusive and, and looking at, you know, what what's the size of the studio? What were the resources put in before we say a million is a flop, right? But on top of that, I think because a sad sect of fanboys are being thrown every which way, they are trying to make exclusives look like a failure because A, their favorite piece of plastic 
is trying to move away solely from exclusives. They're now indoctrinating you all with the term launch exclusive. <laughs> They're talking about their first party games as launch exclusives, even when it comes to other consoles, right? It's one thing when you talk about PC and I think PC is a different animal. We, we, we look at Steam and people are like, oh, Steam, this is Steam. Look, that's a completely different subsect of gamers. They really don't belong in the console war conversation, but they keep trying to interject themselves. I don't know why, right? But if they're here, so be it, whatever. Hit the like button while you're here, okay? That being said, there are different sect of gamers, but that's different. When you're talking about timed, versus it being on a console and then coming to PC, that is not the same as timed as it being on a console and then it going to a rival console, right? So now when it comes, when, it, when it's between console and console, they are now talking about what? Launch exclusives. <laughs> I'm not making this up y'all, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm dead ass, this is serious, right? Oh, they're dead ass about this. They're serious. So, but that said, those are the three things that are going on. It's it, it being called a flop. But I think it's based upon similar success of tentpole PlayStation titles. But more importantly, you got these fanboys on the periphery that want to drag down exclusivity because their favorite piece of plastic is no longer abiding by those rules of engagement, right? But in light of all that, here are the facts, okay? On why calling this a flop is, is silly. First and foremost, it was made by a small studio. It's made by a small Korean studio that used to make mobile games for crying out loud. They jumped from making mobile games and now they're making triple A or, you know, triple A-esque games. I don't know if you want to call, I mean, there is a triple A price tag to it. So, you know, let's call it triple A game. They went from mobile games to that with a critically acclaimed hit that sold a million copies a couple of months from launch. Right? Right. So let's talk about that. Okay, small company with an equally small budget. You, you heard me say that. Now I'm looking at reports, I've been researching, and I'm looking at reports that suggest that this game costs anywhere between 50 to 80 million to develop. Then on top of that, you had Sony fund some of that and then do some of the market. Nowadays, we got games that are costing half a billion dollars. Spider-Man costs 3 billion. To make, I mean, oh, Jesus Christ, three hundred million to make. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm talking about these fanboys got me talking delusionally. But yeah, we, we got games upwards of three hundred million. Right, this game in development probably didn't even hit a hundred million. That's astounding for a AAA game. And then, like we said. Sony funded it, but also dude, and they got a lot of free marketing due to what I like to call booty cheek gate. <laughs> That's some of those lonely nerds that actually play games too. That's like, oh, I don't see enough cleavage. Tell me a little bit more areola. Yeah, because of those folks, they gave it even more unprecedented coverage and it made it even more popular as far as I'm concerned from what I could see. So yeah, small studio estimated co costs and last but certainly not least, it topped sales charts. Like that's what really makes this ridiculous. It was the number one game in April when it came to Sakana slash NPD only four days out. I think it released the 26th of April. So only in its first four days, it took over all the games in April in North America. And North America is PlayStation's largest region when it comes to its console, right? You don't believe me? Let me show you something. Because this is from gameindustry.biz. 
that Stellar Blade debuted at number one in Sakana's US charts for April. And also it became the 16th best selling game of 2024 today. So a game that's almost five months out, that's the next point. It's almost five months out of other games. It's still top the top 20 in game sold for 2024. Wow. But there's not just that. PlayStation's second largest region, which is uh, Europe, I believe, right? Is, is this game industry bit? I think they cover all of Europe. This is um, the, yeah, yeah, Europe. This is the GSD chart, which covers Europe, digital and physical. And for April, 2024, again, only four days in the month. Is it released? What, April 26th, four or five days in the month. Stellar Blade was ninth. It hit the top 10 for the GSD chart. That, my friends, within itself is phenomenal. For a title of such small scope from a studio with that background, I mean, I said great, but in my opinion, I would even argue phenomenal. Okay. And it's even gotten to the point to where the developer themselves, look, the developers were running into trouble because they wanted to go public before the release of this game. And they had to help hold back going public because the investors were not even looking at this game, right? They were looking at its prior mobile game and they're like, nah, it's all you got to show for right now is this mobile game and you're too self-reliant. So they had to sell off the launch. I mean, they had to hold off the launching of the IPO because of that now this game comes out and now they can now they are able to go back to the investors to say not a not a boo boo look you not only have our success from our mobile game but now we got this 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 tent pole for us ip that undoubtedly is going to get a sequel and it's likely going to go to other platforms you know what i'm saying that's crazy and, and kudos to them and i've said before that I'm all for the Korean revolution. I've said that a couple of months ago. Remember that? Me and Cold Blood was talking. I said, I am all for the Korean revolution when it comes to gaming. I love their media. I love their cinema. I watch their shows. I got my wife hooked on Korean uh, TV. That's all she watches. You know what I'm saying? I love their action movies. I'm all for the Korean takeover. There's other games. Like I think there's one called Section 8. And there's some other stuff. Um... The First Descendant and some other Korean games coming out there that look really promising. We'll see how they land. But I, 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 I love Stellar Blade. I love it. Matter of fact, I need to hurry up with this damn video so I can go play some more. You know what I'm saying? So stay tuned for that on MM2K Gaming Streams. That being said, the expectations around the sales of this game are silly. I get that PlayStation tentpole titles normally see triple this during the um, during their launch, right? And they see multi-plat numbers. Like you'll see God of War. Like, okay, give me let me give you a prime example. Um, Dragon's Dogma sold 2.5 million in 11 days, where God of War on a PlayStation console will sell that in like three days. Like there's there's been reports of God of War selling 5 million in seven days, right? That's what people are used to. And here's what's not being understood. This is not one of those 10 pole games. This is a PlayStation second party, a third party exclusive, right? Because it's, it's only timed. I, I believe it's gonna go to other places, uh, even though Sony invested in it. And when it comes to their exclusives altogether, we got to remember, we can't be like these fanboys and forget the purpose of exclusives. We got to remember that exclusives are around, not just for individual sales, but they're there to sell the entire marketplace. What is it that I'm, what is it that I'm babbling about? Let me show you this. Yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. The 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 the, the world renowned Shuhei Yoshida article that I keep referencing to, and I'm gonna do it at nauseum because I get that a lot of you are new here 
You've been listening to those other content creators that just are full of gimmicks and lies. But here we give you the truth. Okay. This is an article all the way back from what, 2014? And it still applies. This gives you a peer behind the veil of how PlayStation and really the general gaming populace outside of Xbox approaches exclusives. Shuei Yoshida says only four out of 10 PlayStation games make money, but Sony will always support talent. So let's, let, let's go to what he has to say here. It's a hit driven business. We look at our financial results of the titles and then we probably uh, three or four out of the 10 make money and maybe one or two make all the money to cover the cost of the other titles. So we have to be able to maintain that hit ratio at a certain level to be able to continue the business. So we always try to find out and support and help and grow the talent. That's most important work that I believe in. You know, this is Yoshida talking at the time. Myself and some of my management team at Worldwide Studios are doing. What is he saying there? He's saying, look, for us, for PlayStation, the individual appeal of our console is number one. We're going to make money off of the third party games. And that's where we make most of our money. That's where most of them make all of their money outside of Nintendo. Probably. But you know, when you're on a triple a console market, the majority, the overwhelming majority of your money comes from third party. The thing is, is that this said gamer, most gamers have to make a choice. They're not like you and I listening to this. If you're the average gamer, you're not going to know who the hell an MM2K or an MM2K gaming is, and you probably will never find out. I would love for it to be otherwise, but reality is reality. So most people that are listening to this, that listen to any of this content from any of these people, overwhelming majority of them, they are not th that are into the lore of gaming all like that. They have a choice to make. They don't have all the platforms. They grab a singular platform and that's what they support. And that's where they built their library. So if that is the case, the difference between me buying a multi-plat, which is available everywhere on your console versus theirs is what is what's distinct about your console. And that main distinction is always what the exclusives. Okay, I get to play my Call of Duty and, and my Fortnite and my, and my Madden here and my FIFA. But what are the other games that are going to draw me to that platform? What? Why should I pick this console over that one? It's the exclusives. And if it's not just the exclusives directly for you, it's the, if you play Call of Duty and you got a clan or, you know, whatever it is, you play any of these free to play shooter games, or whatever, and you build up a clan or there's people that you regularly play with. They are the best people in those clans are usually the more diehard gamers who themselves care about the exclusives. So it's a double whammy. So what am I, what is it that he's saying here? He's saying that our console is first and foremost, the paramount thing that we have our exclusives for. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to make our library look more appealing than anybody else. So our console sells more. It's all about our marketplace. Our marketplace sells more consoles. The more consoles that we have versus our competition, the more likely that those third party games that make up the bulk of the money anywhere, we will get the hugest chunk of that. It is being reported that Call of Duty, 48% of Call of Duty people play on PlayStation. Just because Xbox owns them now, that's not going to change. Game Pass ain't gonna change that. It may dip to 47%. <laughs> it's not gonna significantly change that. The PlayStation Marketplace is a powerful, powerful thing in the gaming industry. And you're going to have exclusives that maybe don't sell out of the wazoo, but because they're critically acclaimed, we know by the court documents that Sony's paying attention to uh to metacritic and, and and digital foundry when you get that critical acclaim that makes your overall library more in in, in um enticing so that's why they say we know maybe a maximum of four we expect to do well out of the 10 exclusives that we we support or that we make and two out of the two out of the 10 
are going to fund the rest of them. But that's the purpose of our exclusives. They are to fund and make this marketplace more critically acclaimed. So when people are trying to make the distinction of where they're going to buy their multiplats, they choose us most of the time. And that's the secret sauce to PlayStation success. Sorry for that mic hit. And I got to ask these fanboys that don't understand or forgot this dynamic. Where was this energy when Hi-Fi Rush was only boasting, what, 2 million players? Not, 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 not purchases, players around the same time out and only got, like, what, 3 million nine months out from launch? Like, and, and, and this is what I want you guys to understand. Or, 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 you know what? No, no. I got a question. Better yet. Why can you excuse a game not selling 10 million right if it's for game pass and if it's going in game pass day and date you guys will excuse that and, and run with that excuse for on behalf of microsoft right but game pass is a service that failed miserably to reach any of its litmuses to date hasn't reached its goals it's always underperforming always but then you'll criticize playstation when their exclusives don't automatically hit 10 million, even though, as Juhei Yoshida said all the way back in 2014, that still applies today, that the purpose of the exclusives is to boost up our marketplace, which is successful, which is breaking records. More PlayStation consoles were shipped out this past fiscal year than any year during the PlayStation 4 era. So you, you can't, you will sit there and criticize PlayStation, even though sales on exclusives may not be extravagantly high on every game, but they're making the sacrifice for their entire marketplace. But then you will sit there and excuse it for a failing service. Is that what I'm hearing here? Cause that's what it sounds like. And it sounds like fanboyism. Look, let, let, let's wrap this up. I've babbled long enough. Here's the facts. The failure claim is a bunch of malarkey. And you know what? I, I got a tweet here. I almost forgot about. Let's put this up here. I got a tweet here. I think that best explains everything here because we have somebody else that in, in, in attempts to try to downplay the success of this title. Porter Rock was responding to somebody and said, look, it did phenomenal. The budget is estimated at 50 million and Sony funded it. An unknown Korean dev in the AAA gaming space got their first success, already planning DLC in the sequel um, versus being shut down like other studios, right? Like the Tango Works. <laughs> and shout out to them. It, it's, it's not funny, but it's just the irony and the hubris of this. And I said, that's right, Porter Rock. There is no debate. Like you said, I know Dev who used to do mobile, small budget, two months out, already at 1 million on a singular platform, halfway through its life cycle. Everything doesn't need God of War or Spider-Man numbers to be successful sales wise, especially based on this backdrop. I think it's time for fanboys and the Xbox fanboys in particular to stop with this. You know, we're gonna just find anything they hate on PlayStation. And you really need to be concerned with your games and hope they see even this much engagement via sales. Because we've already seen what believe in the lie of, oh, it's it's just to support Game Pass, and it's just, it's, a, it's about engagement. We, we'll see what that does. We see what that does. Tango works, right? And what Porter Rock alluded to. Here's, here's the fact of the matter, y'all. If legacy Xbox titles fail, and they keep getting in, in those developers that make those titles fail as far as sales is concerned. And those developers keep getting purged. Xbox will undoubtedly just become Activision 2.0, full on third party dev that happens to have a stream stick. And with that said, that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. It's like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. They will lead you to Geeks, Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, here, MM2K Gaming. With that said, peace. Have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day.